Welcome everyone, this is Carl and Denny with Get Wisdom and today we're going to continue with our channeling series and today Carl is going to channel Yuri Bezmenov. Uh, he's also known as Thomas Schumann and he defected from uh, the Soviet KGB when he was an agent in India and he, he, the story goes that he dressed up like a hippie, joined a, uh, a group of uh, hippie tourists in India, I think back in the 80s maybe the uh, late 70s you will have seen a little bio in the first part of this video that kind of gives a, a an overview of his life so that will be in there anyway he's an interesting fellow he uh, he was probably made popular uh, in the western world he, he actually defected to canada lived in canada uh but he was kind of made fa famous in, amongst the whistleblowers and whatnot with an interview that he did with g edward griffin who uh, was famous for, as being the author of The Creature of Jekyll Island, uh, which was kind of a whistleblower's document about the Federal Reserve. Uh, a very good book that I recommend often to people. But he did quite an interview with uh, Yuri uh, Bezmenov, also known as Thomas Schumann. And that's how a lot of people got to know this guy, who he was. Um, so he was a defector. Uh, he was interviewed by the CIA in in Greece, I believe, before he came to Canada. And I think he may have spent some time in the U.S. as well. So he's our subject for today. We've got um, six questions for him. And Carl and I talked a little bit um, about this fellow because he's not hes not really well known. He's not somebody that I uh, knew much about until recently. Um, but he's got a lot of interesting things. He had a lot of interesting things to say about what the KGB's plans were for the United States. So um, so thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you, Carl. And maybe we can have a little discussion about uh, these types of things before we start the channeling. Sure, thank you, Danny. Thanks to all of you who are watching this. I'm not sure what drew you here. Uh, this fellow was unknown to me before I saw this on the roster that Denny had, had come uh, upon this guy in one way or another and and elevated him to this kind of panoply of interesting characters and figures from history and people in the culture who have prominence and others who are lesser known, lesser lights maybe, or even dark figures who were victimizing others, but have a story. And to me, the, the interest here in looking at someone who was involved with the Soviet intelligence apparatus, not at maybe the highest levels, but had a life spent doing it, has some karmic involvement, in a sense, skin in the game as being a participant. And now is a person we can go to to learn from because they'll have a karmic benefit potentially from righting some of the wrongs that were done under their watch when they took part in whatever it is they were doing. And so this isn't to try to unearth his misdeeds or anything like that. We want to use him as a resource, having been a part of that enterprise, but now talking to him while he's back in the light, yeah. back in his divine mode, and can look back dispassionately to all that happened and the times he was a part of and shed new light on that era and what it means in a larger sense. Because we have that mirror image in the U.S. of the Central Intelligence Agency, that these are kind of, in a sense, twins, and maybe some would say twin devils. I don't want to jump the gun on uh, what I'm expecting might roll out here. But <laughs> uh, we know a lot about the history here of our own intelligence uh, apparatus. And it's highly revered in many quarters, highly respected and trusted. But many see through that public persona, that image, and see a lot of examples of kind of weirdness, craziness, illogical activities, and things that turn out to be inimical to the interests of the U.S., in the case of CIA, and certainly to the 
interests of the of Soviet Russia or Russia now in terms of KGB operations. So it's a weird construct to begin with. And I think it's very revealing to look at this because this is sort of the poster child for how corruption can begin and operate freely right under your nose and with people not only accepting it, but sort of treasuring the fact they've got this going. You know, we've got our spies too and all of this. And the way this has been treated in the media, like in motion pictures, that that uh, the secret agent is this kind of amazing figure. and Yeah, the James Bond yeah, enigma. Yeah. yeah, yeah, larger than life yeah. and gets all the girls and all of that, you know, has – has all this charm and sub warfare and and meanwhile they're screwing up the world at the benefit of the state which is often a tyrannical apparatus and at least at times even in the so-called free world so uh, there's a lot to learn here I think I'm looking forward to filling in some more blanks and we're going to be asking him about the current state of affairs in some yeah. respects too. Yeah. With the last question, we're actually going to be, well, actually the last two questions, we're going to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and, you know, how that ties in with, uh, uh, with what a lot of people are claiming is a more uh, uh, totalitarian, totalitarian and martial state kind of uh, approach to the populations from the gov- respective governments. Um uh, you know, we're seeing this now with the with the lockdowns being extended in uh, some states, and uh, you know, you actually using the confusion as a tool for controlling the the population in response to the pandemic. And the other thing we're going to talk to him about, which we, which I don't think there's too much, I wasn't able to find too much about his reaction to the so-called fall of the Soviet Union, because I think in his earlier proclamations, um, you know, he didn't really. My understanding is what he he really didn't predict that that happening. You know, we we did a, a channeling uh, recently with a fellow who worked with uh, Gorbachev, uh, who you know some would claim was he was one of the architects of Perestroika in, in Glasnost, and I don't think this was really on uh, Yuri's uh, radar screen at the time. You know, he defected and even in later years, so he passed after the. Uh, Soviet Union, you know, so-called uh, came apart and, you know, turned into Russia, back into Russia. Um, and I'm really curious as to what his reaction is, you know, or what his reaction, not only as a light being, but what his reaction would have been as, you know, when he was alive, you know. I think he died in 93. Um, because my impression at this point would be that that would have been a come as a surprise to him. But I don't know. You know, who knows? You know, he could, for all we know, he could have been set up as a double agent and the, and the Soviet Union, you know, gave him a red carpet ride out of India to the United States so he could dis, dis, you know, misinform a bunch of people. I don't know. You know, the stranger things have certainly happened. And that's one thing we're finding out in the channeling series is that the truth is usually much stranger than fiction or, or especially what we've been told. Yeah. Well, and this is a bitter truth that, is difficult for people to believe, let alone accept and take it as a given. But we see this again and again and again, wherever we look, that institutions are corrupt, systems are corrupt, governments are corrupt, and the the, the national cultures are corrupted. And it's across the board. So, The first thing I would say to to people watching this series is don't judge the book by its cover. You know, this this is so true of people. Many of these people, most, in fact, who we've interviewed, were wanting to do their best. They believed in what they were doing while they were alive for often lofty reasons. They may have been misguided. They may have been manipulated and misinformed. They may have been biased because of the forces around them and their, what they're exposed to. But they were trying to help 
something they believed in. But no matter where you look for a hero in today's world, you'll see limitations, deficiencies, confusion, and contaminated thinking across the board, no matter what you do. Yeah. You know, I, I was always interested in science and medicine as a kid. And so I, I loved reading about it. And doctors were, to me, heroes. And you see a lot of that in, you know, screenplays and, and all the TV shows with the doctors and nurses and all this sort of thing. Yeah. But if you understand truly what is going on in the world of medicine, it's highly corrupted by disinformation. And it's managed yeah. to be limited on the one hand with what they're able to research yeah. and find new treatments for. And on the other hand, those things that they do often are more destructive than helpful or that need to be yeah, as not, bad as they are. It's not just a collection of mistakes and benign oversights. This is managed for it often is. the worst outcomes. It is. It is. Yeah. And it's done through mind control manipulation. So everyone is a manipulated tool of the darkness in small or large ways. And everyone who's complacent is part of that management scheme. Yeah. The people who don't see anything wrong with the world and think everything's just fine. Don't bother me. I've got to go watch the game on TV or yeah. so on. And and even though, you know, you and I are kind of like immersed in this and have maybe even become jaded to some extent, I think we both still understand that this is a bitter pill for people to swallow. This is like, it is. It's it like is. an unbelievable truth claim. Like, why would you guys even say such a thing? This is ridiculous. So I, I understand, you know, people's response to this because that's what we that's what the response we get if we try to explain it to somebody, you know. You've nut, you're nuts. You fell off the truck. You've damaged your head. You have a brain injury. You need to be on medication. I've heard all this stuff before, but if you take, if you have an open mind and you take a hard look at, at the truth and the evidence and everything that we're facing, not only now but in human history, you'll be, you will be able to connect the dots, and it will turn out to be the very best ex explanation for what's going on and the predicament that humans are in right now. Well, it certainly makes all the pieces fit together. Why things are inefficient, working across purposes, often wrong-headed, and often the wrong response to an issue that ends up being more destructive. We just think it's the law of unintended consequences. We give it a kind of a humorous quip yeah. to say whenever this happens. Yeah. But that's all we do. We don't look at, well, how did this really come to be? Right. Whose responsibility was it? What were they thinking? What was the source of information informing them right. in how they made their decisions and yeah. so on? It, it never really gets looked at. And a lot of the reasons why is it's inexplicable. It just sort of happens. Right. And people take it on themselves to just say no to doing a little further research, even though all the signs are screaming, go look, go look, look at this information, look at that data, look, it's all pointing towards another piece here. We got to figure this out. No, it's not relevant. That's just a, you know, an epiphenomenon, a society issue. It's not going to be productive. It's a waste of funding. We have to <laughs> we have so many other demands, et cetera. Right. Move on, and, and then the world does. Yeah, which which happens to be true in almost every area of inquiry. Yes. That that phenomenon is not isolated to some, you know, just a, few, a handful of areas like, you know, medicine and academia and politics or something. It's everywhere, you know. It's um, it's amazing how prevalent that that. That you know, get up to, like you say, the precipice, and then the apathy kicks in, and you're back, you know, walking around with the lemmings. You know, it happens every time. Yeah. So, um, and and uh, you know, it's true what we're doing here with Get Wisdom as well. We're blowing the lid off hundreds of scandals <laughs> and and bizarre circumstances that shouldn't exist, but yet do. 
And we give the reasons why, and we trace the history and discuss the influences and what the purpose is, what the consequences are already becoming and will likely continue and so on. But it's not easy to get even people to come and look at what we're doing. Yeah. They're too complacent. Yeah. They run the other way because they've been programmed. Oh, they're talking about ETs. Oh, I'm out of here. Yeah. That's that's crazy talk. Yeah. No one who's sane talks about extraterrestrials yeah. and, or mind control. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's there's a whole there's a whole list of like little triggers that make this right. the off switch just go automatically. Yeah. You don't even have to raise your hand. It just like te- just happens. Yeah. And yeah. God forbid you should mention the deity. Yeah. You know, right. that's that's verboten now in today's yeah. world. That's you know? the big no no. That's yeah. a danger sign if somebody believes in God now, you know, yeah. jeepers. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's probably a pretty good introduction for what's for what you're going to hear. Um, like I say, we have six questions for him. Um, mo- a lot of our channeling subjects lately have been have given us very lengthy answers, uh, no stone un- unturned. This one will probably be uh, similar to that, I would imagine. Um, very few light beings get to talk to us, so there's a you know there's a reason for that. So uh, with that, perhaps we should get started. Okay, we'll dive into the sinister world <laughs> and and maybe get some additional new perspectives on how these things are done. Okay, and why? And I think that's the education very much needed right now. If we're ever going to break out of this mold where it, these things just are done to us over and over and over again. We got to wake up. Yeah. Got to see the outlines and be able to recognize this handiwork and then do something to bring attention to it and um, and bring a, eventually a change in things. So we'll see if we can get some help now from the light. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'll uh, do my thing as a channeler to connect to him. And I do it through creator of all that is. I go up to God and ask to be connected to his consciousness in the light. And I do this specifically for safety and security of the communication. Most channelers are really not spiritual. They may pretend to be or think they are. But they're sort of a a do-it-yourself spirituality advocate. They think because they're light beings, they can do whatever they want with their thoughts. If they're pristine and lofty, everything will be fine. And that's a danger because they can be easily duped and are. There will be an extraterrestrial psychic arriving to talk with them if they send their mind out to connect with something. Unless they ask for divine protection to keep the communication restricted only to divine level subjects. And that's the the downfall of this whole New Age movement, that it is actually becoming in its own way a secular movement that has no, um, no real goods to offer. It is an empty exercise and a make work exercise the people are choosing because that's what they tell one another. Oh, just do this, just do that, meditate or whatever. And even in meditation, if you want to connect to something higher, you will get an imposter. If you're not meditating with the Almighty, which can give you a completely different experience. So, so that's my little lecture just to help frame what we do and why we get the information coming forth that we do. Because we're going to authentic sources and not make-believe sources that will only give you encouragement, false encouragement, really. Yeah. That everything's fine, everything's wonderful, ascension is nigh, and it'll be any time now, and we just need for this conjunction of something with something and all the right energies to kind of be ready, and and then zoom, you know, we're going to have our glorious elevation and uh and the the reality is there is a plan for ascension but it can't happen until we heal this mess 
That is the reality we're told about. So that's why this is so important. This isn't just some historical muckraking exercise or a, a kind of a perverse sort of uh, gaper's yeah. block where we're looking at travesty just yeah, to looking kind of, the rug. Yeah, just yeah. looking for uh, things to marvel at and, and maybe kind of poke fun at what were they thinking and so on. This is really to bring healing forward. So we can advance humanity in a true way. And and I I'm I'm amazed at the clarity we get with these channel communications. Because even after years of thinking about enlightenment, talking about enlightenment, and this cacophony of voices, all promising enlightenment, if you just go and do this and just go and do that and contemplate your navel, no, you look at the sun, you gaze at the sun, no, you meditate about Gaia, and it will draw you into Mother Earth's energies, and you'll be raised up, and you'll be exalted, and whatever it is, okay. But what Creator said one day is that what people are really seeking and presuming to, to, to present and discuss is actual healing. The reason we're not enlightened is because we're broken. We're damaged goods. We've been corrupted. We're off our path. We're blind to the truth. We've been roughed up. We've been denigrated and, and degraded in our functioning. We've had huge traumas happen, life after life after life. That's got to all get healed now. So enlightenment is a healing exercise. Yeah to bring us back into divine alignment once again and how we function and our level of vibration, if you yeah, will. It's like the outcome of healing or the result of healing. If you're healed, yes. then enlightenment follows. Yes, yeah. exactly. So enlightenment is a product of healing. Yes. That's something that means we're healed and everything is going to be wonderful. We just jump to enlightenment, you know. Right. Or, or some benevolent ETs comes in and change the energy grid on the world, on the earth or something like that. Yeah. Or, or the, the, the other one that we hear sometimes is a solar flash. There'll be a great uh, solar event that will change the consciousness on, you know, the planet. And it's just a miraculous event that happens every, you know, 26,000 years or something that, you know, oh, boy. the cycle or something. Yeah. So, yeah. So, the, the, you know, the information being presented here is, markedly different so hopefully that will uh, resonate with some of our viewers all right so i will connect with uh with uh mr bezhmanoff and i will let you know when he's on board okay and i'll just take a couple moments to get into that state of consciousness i need okay this is yuri bezhmanoff speaking Thank you for joining us. Was your death due to an induced heart attack by a Russian or other intelligence agency? Or would, or, or would it be better considered as a natural occurrence? And were you able to transition successfully? The sad reality of my passing is that I was literally and frankly murdered for my perceived misconduct in speaking truth about my history, my involvement with the Soviet security apparatus and their aims. And that was the greatest affront, that I did it not for a financial gain of bribery or selling out secrets for cash. I did it because of a change of heart, and that is the big unforgivable sin to those who serve the darkness. It is turning away from darkness that becomes the crime. They will never forget an insult, an injury, or a disloyalty, if only of thought. So my crimes were large in their perspective. And every time someone like myself dies, even seemingly of natural causes, 
those in the community knowing of the person's history get the message as a reminder they could be next. So it instills fear and spreads fear and is intended to be a disincentive as well as a punishment of the individual. Coming as it did unexpectedly, I was unprepared for my passing and was not in spiritual alignment. This is not surprising because my history was a dark one in many respects. And this was done out of loyalty in being misguided and persuaded by my position and my background, my learning, the cultural environment I grew up within. I believed in serving the national power structure that is always presented as the loftiest of goals and the most important of services because the infrastructure of a nation is its security and success in terms of potential for failure without a coherent operating system and too many competing forces that become self-canceling and prevent actual true progress. Many governmental systems impart efficiency to things. It is eventually a deadening if individual initiative is crushed and the rewards for individual contribution become too meager. People will burn out. They will lose their zeal over time and will drop away in their dedication. But for the young who are eager, a nation can build greatness through an iron-fisted control and a mind manipulation to keep everyone in lockstep for the most part. And it can work for quite a long time. That was my heritage. But it was not spiritual preparation to navigate in a world from a divine perspective to look for opportunities to bring love to bear on things. That was the piece that was missing, being rational-minded and thinking more pragmatically about systems and organizational manipulations and the use of information as a tool to change minds and hearts and even create campaigns designed to undermine people and take away their belief and their faith in things and destroy their morale. Such endeavors become a soul-deadening exercise because they are anti-divine in origin and inspiration. They are a kind of contamination rather than building something from divine energies. All human beings are divine, but they can choose to disregard this reality and hew to a different kind of allegiance. This is an aspect of free will in action, but it comes at a cost, and that cost is a degradation in the ally alignment 
with divine principles and the closeness of the interrelationship with the Almighty experienced by the individual. When you die without belief, God will ignore you because you have already chosen to be ignored. And that is a continued honoring of that free will choice to have that state of affairs. So this left me in limbo until very, very recently and is an object lesson for the non-believer to look to God for partnership in life in all ways, at all times. This is never more important than when your body gives out. In that moment, you will lose the body entirely and will be transformed into energy and your consciousness will be floating in a void tethered briefly to the body still, but looking for a new home. If you are not expecting a joyous afterlife and a reunion in heaven with your maker, you may remain in limbo. And we can tell you from personal experience, this is not a place you want to be. There is no greater loneliness than being a discarnate spirit in limbo, tumbling in the darkness, and only encountering dark energies, dark beings, who will torment and harass and mock and terrorize you With no let up, there is no refuge in sleep. There is no way to make it stop. You cannot journey without taking the darkness with you. They will never let go of you unless you can somehow connect with something higher. We were offered a rescue and were raised up enough to see the light callers coming yet again, but had been unable to even know they were present until we had had enough healing. This is a premier example of what you were speaking of prior to connecting with us. Without an awareness, there can be no communication. When people are not ready and are too lowered in their perspective, and are not looking for something more, something higher, something better, and have it in their mind as a destination, a relationship as much as a location, to be once again in the arms of the Almighty, sheltered and loved like no other you will be lost. And if you have any awareness of the reality of the divine and look forward to the visible reunion, to be with full awareness in God's presence, you will have no trouble when you transition. It was a blessing for me to be raised up in this way. That 
is enlightenment indeed of the best and most useful kind. It is to be back once again on a divine path where love and joy are the order of the day. They are the very workings of the energies that you use to live and experience things. You are denied this in your earthly existence for the most part. That is what is wrong with the world. You all need an enlightenment to rejoin in a partnership with Creator to make your life better and the world in turn. Thank you. You claim that there was no such thing as a grassroots revolutionary movement or a grassroots liberation army, and all such things were orchestrated from government agencies, and that they usually served more of as a destabilizers than in service to some desirable political outcome. Can you explain? This was the way of the world from my purview as an agent of the Soviet state working through the intelligence apparatus in very much that way to find opportunities to sow discord and then recruit the disaffected and to empower them not only with a different perspective and propaganda tools to further their cause in persuading others to agree with them and to join a movement of some kind, but to manipulate them in reaching for a violent solution for their disaffection. This is orchestrated over and over and over again and has happened all around the world and all through human history. You see the end product as wars that are frequent, periodic, ever recurring. And the conclusion is that humans are warlike, that war is inevitable. And even when forestalled, will only be true for a time, and eventually the dam will break, and war will break out once again and be unavoidable. None of this is true. Wars are engineered. They are a fabrication and a distortion of reality sufficient to get them going. They manipulate nations on both sides of a disagreement, a misunderstanding, sometimes an illusion or a delusional false interpretation of motivation or even the misconstruing of a chance event not meant to harm as being sinister and a challenge or a front. It can be any type of manipulation to strike the spark that gets the fire going. But when it happens, it is always intentional. Even if a chance occurrence leads to a conflict, it will be through the conscious, willful exploitation to make it a cause celebre and get combatants at one another's throats. It often begins at a local level, and this is what we were referring to in what you quoted 
That is not natural either. It is inhuman to seek redress for grievances in the killing of other people. That always comes after a considerable manipulation of all involved to make them disregard their moral qualms about murder and substitute their national pride as a justification for the taking of a life. This is not normal either. It is not humans are unable to think. It is that the thinking is blocked through a mind control manipulation. So when movements get moving and through violent means or trappings that are the prelude to having a force of insurgents, guerrilla fighters, and so on, you can be sure that it was manipulated to happen. These events are wholly unnatural. They are a sign of dark influence and corruption that is instilling within the minds and hearts of human beings a toughening, a hardening of their heart and overriding their conscience to put national pride or national security in response to interfere in the driver's seat. And the end result will be a rash action, a rush to judgment, and the taking up of arms in what might become a whirlwind of activity that becomes unstoppable. This is wholly unnatural. It is guided all along the way by mind control manipulation from first to last, awakening thoughts within the minds of people pushing their buttons for the various sore points they're most vulnerable with, past abuses, past grievances, past humiliations at the hands of someone soon to be their enemy once again, a reawakening of bad blood, so to speak, the karmic traumas, of the past, all will be mined deliberately to reawaken old passions, stir up trouble, and get conflict going. It is easy then for the minions of the more powerful to infiltrate their ranks with promises of support along with encouragement for their violent aims. And money and materiel will flow to that guerrilla force or insurgent group to arm them more thoroughly and more powerfully to make them a force to contend with and create a greater rift with the powers that be. All of which is intended to have a larger breakout into a war level undertaking of violence and death. All involved lose in the end. Nothing is ever truly gained by armed conflict. There may be a change of flags that fly over your capital. 
but it will not bring a better world for you. It will change the names and faces of the leaders, but you will still be serving them and not vice versa. This is the painful truth of all such activities. The desire for self-control, self-preservation, and for a kind of justice that is the wellspring of armed movements becomes perverted into justifying violent action as a means to an end when this will not be a means to an end but an end by those means in their safety, security, and future unencumbered by severe karmic wounding that will exact a very, very severe penalty inevitably. One day, the victor of that squabble will become a victim of someone stronger or with a better argument. And they will trade places. And this may persist as a kind of dance, taking turns, leading or following, being on top or subjugated beneath. All the while, the wounds will grow in frequency, intensity, and consequence because they hurt themselves at the same time as they hurt their opponent. This is the inevitable consequence of karmic wrongdoing. Violence and killing are never justified. There is a karmic penalty that will ensue, and the impulse to do it in the first place is always coming from the darkness in some way, directly or indirectly, until humans begin to see this reality, they will be maneuvered, manipulated, and maligned again and again and again by being brought into false wars under false flags for false goals and promises and will only end in misery. This needs to be learned before anything else because it is a tried and true way of manipulating humanity to continue the depravity of the hidden hand behind the scenes orchestrating all of these events. It is the intelligence agencies on the ground who are the interface with the disaffected to recruit them, to supply them with arms and get them marching, giving them tactical support, counterintelligence, and military training, as well as a generous supply of armaments and ammunition. You must look at who truly benefits from doing this. If you look back through history, you will see that the state sponsors of such mischief always lose out in the end materially. That is enough to malign the practice and to return again to common sense and reason. 
because the true damage is not even being assessed. It is in the negative karma gained by all, sullied by the experience. And that will continue to plague the participants well into their future in multiple lifetimes following involvement in warfare. Okay, thank you. You stated, quote, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who is demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell him nothing. Even if I shower him with information, with authentic proof, with documents and pictures, he will refuse to believe it. That's the tragedy of the situation of demoralization, unquote. Is this indeed the way you see it now as a light being? Is mind control of the sort humans are subjected to by the interlopers more important than demoralization in this regard? This is Rasputin. Thank you for joining us. Did you make it to the light upon your death? And was your death caused by the gunshot wound to your head? Was there poison in the wine and or the cake? And given your skills in prophecy, was there any forewarning about this event? Mm -hmm.